Where's Stu Harmin Freon and welcome to another video. I have posted a community post a couple of hours ago that I am most certainly not going to chase clicks and likes by uploading videos about the abhorrent behavior of Hollywood stars during the Oscar ceremonies, nor do I really feel like making a video about uh, an apparent leak from Amazon and the fact that they have created a new Numenorian character a supporting character of, I hope, no importance. Uh, I am past that. Instead, I am going to talk about something that I love, and that is Hellboy, my friends. Oh yes, indeed, I have been a fan, a huge fan of the comic books Hellboy, published by Dark Horse Comics and written, and at the beginning, also drawn by Mike Mignola. And I've also been a huge fan of the two movies with Ron Perlman, directed by Guillermo del Toro, but also, and that might come as a surprise to you, I actually enjoyed uh, the, 19, uh, the 2019 film, Hellboy, directed by Neil Marshall. Why, would you ask? Why, dear European law, you're always complaining about different adaptations? Well, simply... The movie, I know it had its uh, problems, and there were many of them, uh, especially in my eyes, it was the editing. Uh, the editing was very, very bad. The CGI looked cheap. Uh, considering the fact that it was made in 2019, it could have been much better. It could have been edited and cut much better. But uh, out of all the three uh, Hellboy movies, uh, this one actually... <laughs> ironically stuck to the source material the most, especially to the Wild Hunt story arc, uh, as written by Mike Mignola. And there were other bits and pieces from the comic books that I enjoyed, I thoroughly enjoyed. And um, it is, of course, uh, very well known that uh, Hellboy, the comic books, are filled with references and inspirations from different world mythologies and legends and folklore, including uh, the European myths and legends and folklore, uh, of course, Northern and Western Europe, but also Central Europe, you know, the Slavic mythology, uh, such as the addition of Baba Yaga into the stories. And one of the short stories is set in uh, the capital of the country where I live, uh, you know, Prague in the Czech Republic. Um, but this article comes from Bounding Into Comics. Once again, I have to thank them for providing me with great video content. It is a very short article which... Um, basically summarizes the, an interview that um, happened between the director Neil Marshall and um, a YouTuber. So let's dive in. Neil Marshall, the director uh, known for the descent and the misfire that was the Hellboy reboot, opened up recently as to why the film was such a terrible mistake for him to be a part of. Speaking with a critical drinker, oh, so it was uh, the critical drinker, on his After Hours show, Marshall recounted that there was too much studio interference, which wasn't helped by the screenplay being so lackluster for the filmmaker. My experience was, he says, with a laugh. It was the worst professional experience of my life. Sold on the pitch from Lionsgate to make a dark horror version of Hellboy, Marshall quickly realized he was caught in a trap with a bad script that wasn't ever going to get better. You can't polish a turd, he equipped. Creative control was taken from him right away and he was unhappy with the CG gore done in post-production. None of it was his idea, but some people still think he was leaving his mark on the film. Quite to the contrary, Marshall swears, uh, there is very little of himself and his trademarks in Hellboy and he doesn't consider it part of his canon. Used to writing his own films from Doc Soldiers to Doomsday from 2008, Hellboy's script was one Marshall did not pin in a first for him. I won't make that mistake again, he said, adding it was a learning experience. To that point, Marshall was dealing with the biggest budget he's ever had, an estimated 50 Oh, uh, million dollars, and he was eager to get back into feature films when he hadn't made one in a decade. Happy enough to, to sign on, he made it to the set and the rest was messy history. It's a shame because I think there is a good Hellboy movie out there to be done, but that's not it, said Marshall. 
The Hellboy we got, he explained further, was the result of studio people butting in and giving actors new directions in the midst of filming, which is bad for everybody, save for maybe star David Harbour, who blamed Guillermo del Toro fans and Marvel for the film's failure. Well, imagine, my friends, if the uh, director was allowed to do his job properly and uh, there wasn't uh, a lot of uh, studio interference. How good, how awesome that movie could have been. I liked it anyway, but I'm, I'm sure after reading this interview that I would have loved it completely and absolutely. Uh, but who knows, maybe once in the future when world and uh, the entertainment industry get better, or if they get better, we might get um, a Hellboy movie that would be on par and maybe even better than the first two films with Ron Perlman. Let me know in the comments down below what you think, my friends, about the Hellboy film from 2019 and if you've been following uh, the comic books as well. And of course, I have to thank you... Uh, my viewers, my subscribers, and especially my members. Uh, the last time I checked, there were nine of them, so nine companions. And if you are also interested in having uh, a say in the direction that uh, this channel might have in the future, please, there is nothing easier than going to my channel, clicking uh, the join button, and uh, in enjoying all the perks that it will provide you with. And that will be all. Thank you very much for watching, and Namarie.